I'm going to show you the top 5 most common low poly blender modeling mistakes, how to spot them and how to avoid them. And you might wonder, well, I'm doing YouTube videos, how come I know these are so common? Well, last week I actually went up to the Sunshine Coast to a college and I taught 8 students how to model a low poly character. Now their experience was having not seen Blender at all to some of them who've actually used it quite a bit and I was able to firsthand walk around those students and see what was happening and how to rectify it. Coming in at number five we have misplaced geometry. So usually when the students were modeling they did it from one viewport and sometimes they got into a bit of trouble by accidentally or purposely moving some of the vertices or polygons in the wrong direction or in a different direction and from the side it would be obvious but from the front it could look pretty much the same and to fix this make sure that you rotate your viewport quite often and make sure that you don't get into this problem so use the middle mouse button and just rotate and make sure that you check the thing like a sculpture from all angles hopefully they can control z out of it and before any damage was done and also with the misplaced geometry i found that uh, they didn't necessarily model it from the origin so the origin of this character is at the feet here and that's where the origin of a character should be but sometimes they model so the vertices were over here sometimes it looked a bit like this so misplaced geometry was a common one and it could be difficult to fix it before your undo history runs out usually the fix is to do it rotate and spot that's happened and then move yourself back and it's also important to save often because if you don't have enough undo history you could be running out of uh, luck there and uh, hopefully you have a blend file with a previous version number that you can re revert to and worst case scenario if it's misplaced then you simply have to try to fix it so if i had some misplaced geometry like this I would have to manually go in and select them and it could be a little bit difficult you have to use different selection techniques like this maybe I'll box select a few of these and uh, look shift select that one shift select these and then you have to manually repair that by sliding it on the axis like this and see I forgot a vertex here so could be a little bit tricky to revert yourself back coming in at number four we've got adding too much detail to your low poly model and I taught them that for example you can press ctrl r and add a loop cut around the leg you can scale it maybe flare the pants maybe you wanted to do something on the chest as well well you can add a bit, a bit of detail and even i'd go as far as to say that you can use the knife tool to add some of the details let's say you wanted to do something for the top here maybe i wanted to colorize this white instead for a brighter color then i add a bit of detail here but when I showed that you could do this, then they started to go really crazy sometimes. And it looked really cool, but you could get into a bit of a problem. So for example, if you do loop cut this way instead, and you scroll wheel, and you start to add a lot of details like this, and maybe you want to, to reshape the arm, or you wanted to do some detail here for the armor, E to extrude, and S to scale, of course. <laughs> Alt E to extrude, long face normals, you add details here. Maybe you do even more loop cuts and you do more knife cuts. Sometimes it looks really cool and it could work for static objects. But if you're going to do a low poly model that you're going to animate and you want to keep the aesthetic and make assets fast in a game, then you probably want to avoid adding that amount of detail. And keep in mind as well what distance you're going to be viewing the model from. A lot of the low poly objects in games, if it's a top down game or a platformer or an RTS game or something, they'll be viewed super small on screen so maybe it's not worth adding that amount of detail you should probably look more towards texture painting and uv unwrapping if you want to add that amount of detail and it's also possible to weight paint and map the character first and then add a few slices because when you do knife cuts or even if you slide vertices on the character once it's done then it's actually going to inherit the weight paint that you've already mapped before so it could be a little bit easier and also instead of slicing the head to create the eyes like this i actually add separate geometry like this it's only like a cube that's a bit skewed and that could be a better way to add details to your model coming in at number three we've got twisted geometry so we had the the skewed one or the misplaced one before but i ended up as well seeing that some of the stuff like this this was all the way twisted like this they accidentally twisted it and they didn't spot it straight away because maybe if you don't have a trained eye to see exactly like the something's off here then it could be problems further down the line. And when these students were modeling, some of them actually got into this state and they thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll just continue somewhere else on the model. But unless you catch this at a good time, it could be difficult to repair it. So Control Z is your go-to to try to step out of that problem if you, if you spot it and keep your eyes vigilant to, to make sure you don't end up accidentally twisting geometry like this. Because if you start to get a few twisted like this, then okay uh to figure it out after you've run out of undo history and you don't have a save file then you have to manually go and check okay what's going on here can i move this vertex okay what's happening 
and you'd have to maybe manually try to sort this mess out. It's like taking a piece of string or like a fishing line or something and then trying to resolve it like this. And sometimes you get into such a mess that it could be problematic that you even have to delete some of these faces. For example, if I shift select these, delete, I'll take delete faces and then I'd have to see, okay, there's still some problems here. I'll delete this face. And then you have to start patching it together, even delete the vertex. And you can see quickly it goes into problematic because then you have to go around, select edges, press F to fill this one. Then you have some problems with the palette textures and things like that. If you don't want to spend too much time repairing an object like this, try to save often and control Z as soon as you spot that you've accidentally twisted your geometry. At number two, we have inverted faces. And it's not this character's face facing in the other direction. It's actually these polygons here that could be flipped facing the other way. If I flip these manually, Alt N and do flip, you see that you can't really see a problem here, but they're actually facing inwards. And the reason why I can't see it is because I'm in material preview mode. If I press Z and switch to solid, you see, I can still not see that they're facing the other direction. That's because by default, up here in the dropdown, back face culling is disabled. If you switch this on in the solid view, you can see that there's a gap here. And it doesn't mean that the polygons don't exist. They're just facing the other direction. You can see if I rotate the camera, they render in the other direction. And generally, faces in game engines are only rendered on one side. And that's the side that in which the normal is facing. So when you model, make sure that you have back face culling on in the solid view mode here. Also, if you're modeling in the material preview, make sure every now and then to go into the solid and see if you've got any inverted faces. The quickest way to fix these is by just tabbing into edit mode, A to select everything, and then press Shift N. That recalculates all the normals so they automatically face outward. So that's the probably the quickest and easiest fix to do it. You can also flip them manually as I showed previously. You can shift select a few of these and do Alt N and you can recalculate outside, recalculate inside if you want to have something that's actually facing in for a change. And you can flip the normals here manually. And again, you can see that the, the polygons are actually here because I can still select them, but they're just facing the incorrect direction. Let's fix that again select everything and then press shift N and it recalculates them to show on the outside and make sure that you've got back face calling enabled and check often. By the way, if you like these characters, you can go to infensia.com and buy a hundred and whatever of these for about $20 or you can become a patron of mine because the hero tier can download all of them and uh, I'll keep updating them as well. So if you want to use characters in your games or if you want to have something to modify and make your own characters out of, head over to infensia.com or to patreon.com slash infensia. And now to the most common low poly modeling mistake in Blender, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, it is duplicate vertices. If I press uh, tab into edit mode and one here, you can see all these little dots here. These are vertices. And I noticed that a lot of the students, they selected a face. Maybe they wanted to extrude something here. They pressed extrude sometimes like that. It worked great. But if you press extrude and then either escape or right click to cancel out of it, it looks like you actually canceled out of it. But when you go into vertex select mode here and I click on one of these vertices, you can see that it's actually two vertices right there. And I noticed that quite a few of the students did this all over the model. Sometimes as well, you put a loop cut and instead of uh, placing it in the middle, you accidentally slide it all the way down to the bottom. And there you go, you've got a bunch of duplicate uh, vertices here. And sometimes it could be difficult at some point to realize what's going on, but that is the most common thing that was happening. And the way you spot it is that sometimes when you do operations and you notice I wanted to ver move this vertex and I moved it and it starts to look broken, then you know you've got a duplicate vertex there. The easiest way to fix them is just in edit mode, switch to vertex select here, number one, or click up here, press A to select everything, M to merge, and then by distance. And you'll see down at the bottom here, removed 10 vertices because the threshold here is 0 0.0001 meters. So any vertex that was close to each other, they're actually merged into a single one. If I click on this one again and now move it, you can see that it's correct. So that's the easiest way to get out of duplicate vertices. You can also do it manually. Let's say you had a like this, you've got uh, some vertices and you thought, okay, they're duplicate, but they're not exactly in the same place. So you can pick one of the vertices, shift select the other one, press M, and then you can do, for example, either at center, but I'm gonna do at last, it's the last one that I selected, and you can manually do this, merge at last, or you can do in the center, merge 
in the center. So it merges in the center between those there. But I think the easiest one is eight, select everything, merge by distance and make sure that you don't have any duplicate vertices there. All right, folks, that was the five most common modeling mistakes that you run into in Blender when you do low poly modeling and how you can spot them and how you can avoid them. Head over to patreon.com slash Invencia and you can actually grab these uh, characters if you want to download them. It's like 120, 30, 40, I don't know, of them. There's loads of them and I keep adding them. You can also go to Invencia.com and check it out there, some game assets. And also check in my channel history for a yellow thumbnail of a video where I actually teach how to model a character like this. I'll teach you how to model it, how to modify it into different characters, how to weight paint it and add an armature and how to animate it and export it into a game engine. Hit the like button if you learned something and maybe you want to consider subscribing if you want to learn more about modeling and game development. Until next time, have a great one and I'll see you. Bye for now.